Hello everyone. In this problem, we are going to write a quadratic function in what they call vertex form. So what that means is I'm giving this uh, formula right here for a quadratic. That might be called general form anyway. Not so depends on each book. But you have a quad quadratic here, and we're going to write it in this form: f of x equals a x minus h squared plus k. And the what happens when you have this form here? is that the uh, this tells us right off what the vertex is. The vertex here is hk. Okay, so that's 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 why um, one of the reasons we might want to write it in this form. There's other reasons, but but that's uh, a good one, a good reason. So we could we could find the vertex of this quadratic. And and by the way, this this quadratic, the graph of this is a parabola. I know it's a downward facing parabola because I have negative one third right there so negative makes it go down and so our parabola well that's not very good but anyway say so our parabola is a downward facing parabola and then the vertex is hk maybe when we're done we can try to sketch this graph so um okay i have two different methods that i'm going to uh, talk about um so this method here is the first one it's, it's okay okay so let me talk about this one method. I mean, I think you can combine, you can combine these methods. But anyway, um, for, this, for this guy here, I have y equals negative one-third x squared plus 6x minus 23. And the coefficient of x squared is called, will be a, the coefficient of x will be b. And what you can do is you can use a formula using a and b, and the formula tells us what h is of the vertex. And so h is equal to negative b over 2a. Now, that's a formula. Okay, I can remind you, or it might be better just to remember that formula, but notice if I have this, if I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then um, the quadratic formula uh, has, well, what does it have? Is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Notice that this negative b over 2a is in this formula. That's one way you can remember it. Why would that be true? Because if you have ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, this is going to give us the, um, the, the x-intercepts. It's going to give us the x, that formula will give us the x-intercepts of, of, um, of this parabola, in this case, downward facing. And the midpoint of those, of those uh, x-intercepts is going to be h. So there's symmetry. I don't know, my picture, yeah, it shows symmetry. Okay. Um, but in right in between these two is h. So look, if you average these two, so see this guy here would be say x1 or the, the x coordinate will be negative b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And this will be x2 equals negative b plus, negative b, plus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And if you find the average of those two, How do you find the average? You take the sum, you add them up, and when you add them up, these two pieces cancel out. So the negative radical b squared minus 4ac and the positive radical b squared minus 4ac cancel out. And you get two of these, negative b over 2a plus negative b over 2, that makes two of them. But then when you average, you divide by two. So you, so you add these up, I mean, you can just take the average. You add these up, these things cancel, you're going to get two of these because you know because you add them twice, but then you divide by two to get the average. So this guy here gives h equals negative b over 2a. So, of course, you don't have to do that explanation. Maybe I shouldn't have because it drags this video out. But anyway, here we go. And I also need to be able to divide fractions. When I divide negative 6 by negative 2 thirds, I multiply by the reciprocal, 
And so the negatives cancel out. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's 9. Okay, so h equals 9. So that's a really quick way to do this. So if I, you know, I have this, this format here, I already get h. And by the way, I also have a just from the start. a is this same a right here, negative 1 third x squared. That didn't change. So now I have h is 9. How do I find k? k, uh, there, might, there is a formula maybe. I, I guess there's a formula. But I think it's probably better just to, to just point out that k is the y-coordinate that corresponds to h. So I'll just plug h into, um, which in this case is 9. I just plug that in there. And it's, I just say, well, just plug it in there. Um, sometimes that is not as easy as it sounds. I mean, just depending on, oh, it, um, I don't know what that's doing there. Anyway, um, it's not as easy. It, it sounds like it's going to be easy, but then just depending on the problem. So, okay. 81 divided by 3 is 27. So that's, see, that's the thing is you have to simplify it. It's not necessarily that easy. And then if I group the negative 27 plus 54, that's 27 minus 23. So that makes k is equal to 4. So what did I have? I have a is negative 1 third. I have h is equal to 9. k is equal to 4. And um, I'm done, really. f of x, I'll just write down this again, this format, this, this vertex form. And then I'll just plug everything in there. I could really see many teachers just saying, no, don't like it. Um, but I'm just going to point out that if you have a quadratic that has some coefficients that are, you know, decimal numbers, decimal fractions, I suppose you might call it, like say B is 6 instead of being 6, suppose this 6 is like 1.379, then, you know, you're going to want to use a formula. You know, and, and that would be in an application where you might have these numbers being, you know, not, not as simple to work with. So I think the formula would be quite nice. Okay. Now, so this method one, maybe I'll call, you know, formula method. That's basically what that is. And then method two is the way I think uh, is what it is. And this is not like there's any numbering that's given in a textbook. I'm just, I just arbitrarily said this is one and two. But this method is, uh, maybe I shouldn't even call it method two, but it, this is completing the square. Which I believe is a very good thing to learn how to do anyway. Okay. So, um, sort of did that from memory. I wrote that down. But it, it's a good, really good idea for us to know how to complete the square. So I'm going to go through that. But when I complete the square, I can check my answer from the formula. Why not? Okay. So for completing the square, there's different ways to do it, but they're not that different. But what I do is I factor out the coefficient of x squared. And I only factor it out from the first two terms. I leave the 20, that, that constant coefficient, I leave it outside. So... That in itself is a little bit of a challenge. How do I factor out negative one-third from positive six? Well, um, it's, when I factor out negative one-third, it's the same thing as dividing by negative one-third. And uh, dividing by negative one-third is the same thing as multiplying by negative three. All right. The thing is that if that seems like you might get mixed up, or I would, or whoever, I check. I check to multiply this through just to make sure. I mean, we sort of guess it's either going to be multiplied by 3 or divide by 3. If I had divided by 3 and got 2, that would not have worked. It's multiplied by 3. I mean, we don't all just want to guess and you know for everything and then check later. But, but I, I told you that the way you actually find the negative 18 is you take 6 and you divide by negative 1 third. But just, just check that negative 1 third times negative 18 is 6. Then I take the coefficient of x, which is negative 18. I divide it by 2 and square it which is the same thing as 9 squared, and that's 81. Or you can just leave it as 9 squared. That might be, um, you know, actually maybe better. But this is a perfect square. This factors into negative 1 third x minus 9 squared 
hold on, mistake right there. Look, it's a mistake I can easily fix. I just it's sort of going too fast. Okay, see this nine squared? I It wasn't there anymore before. It wasn't there before. I just put it there. All right, if I put this there, I have to counter it. So what do I mean by that? Okay, if I have nine squared here, I have to take it out over there. But also notice that actually, if I'm using the, this, this is why it gets tricky. If I'm using the distribute property, it's not just nine squared by itself. It's actually negative one third times nine squared. That's what's included here. So to counter negative one third I, times nine squared, I have to add one third times nine squared. So I will just say this is that if I'm completing a square and I have a coefficient in front of x squared, it becomes more difficult. Okay, that's just, that's the way it goes. And someone, someone, it is, okay? There might be a faster, quicker, easier way, but in general, it's a little trickier when there's coefficient there. So it's not that I'm going to subtract 9, nine squared. It's, it's because it's 9 squared times negative 1 third, so I have, to, I, have to, I have to counter that. Negative 1 third times 9 squared plus positive 1 third times 9 squared makes 0. Those cancel each other out. And that's what I want. I, don't, I want them canceling out because I, don't want it, I want this original equation here. So that is certainly um, not super easy. Um, anyway, 9 squared is 81. Just fiddle around with this a little more. Okay, and then 81 divided by 3 is 27. You use long division or calculator or whatever. And that gives me the same answer. And I think it's completely reasonable that I learned how to use completing the square, but I also check my answer by using the formula for h. And then, and then even if I'm not even doing that, I mean, for this number 4, if you know... Okay, so we know that h is 9, and this is saying k is 4. It's Regardless if you're using that formula, take this 9, put it in there, and make sure you get 4. You should do that anyway, just to check your work. So... Um, so anyway, that, that, that does that, and um, oh well, you know. Um, so, so, we're, so we're on the way. If we, it didn't ask us to do this, but we could sketch this uh, parabola. The, you, can, you can play around with this, but if you set this equal to zero and solve for x, you're going to see that you get um, rational numbers for your, for your roots when you set this equal to zero. But you could do that too. You could you could set this equal to zero and, and, and solve for x. But that's not really what this video is about. Okay. So uh, and by the way, and, and so again, once again, the this parabola has nine four as its vertex. Okay, that's what h and k tell us. Alrighty. So that finishes the problem. Some people will just say, just look at this part here. But I really think, check your answer, why not, with this formula, which is, all this formula is doing is it's the average of the x-intercepts. That's all it is. So, so by the way, method three, which, I, which uh, I could just do an outline for, I don't think it's such a good idea to do here. Method three would be find the x-intercepts, I'm not going to do that because in this case, finding the x-intercepts is a little bit challenging. Negative one-third x squared plus 6x minus 23 equals zero. That's, you know, you, you'd have to use the quadratic formula for that. And then two, uh, h is equal to the average of the x-intercepts. Now, when would I do this method? I would do this method when it is very clear to me that it's easy to find the x-intercepts by factoring. This one, I, I mean, I worked it out, or you can look from above. This is not going to factor over the real, over the uh, factors of the real numbers, but it does not, actually, does it? Um, yeah, factors over the real numbers, but it doesn't factor over uh, rational numbers, so you're going to get a, a square root here. So you're going to get a square root with this, so it's, it's, you have to use the quadratic formula. So it's a little bit hard to find the x-intercepts. But if it's an easy one to find the x-intercepts, like you can factor it easily, get the x-intercepts, take their average, and that's h. Okay, so you can do that. That's another way to, to and, then, and then you have to find k by 
plugging an H into the function. And that's another way to put it in this form. Okay, so that finishes um, this, that, that problem. Okay, take care, bye.